Hello, I'm Lloyd Bonson and welcome to Brands Hatch for round four of the Competition Car Insurance Ford Fiesta Championship. Today it's the turn of classes A and B to take to the track and John Language, the class A championship leader, is once again on pole position. I'll hand you to Richard to take you through the rest of the grid. Thank you, Lloyd. John, also in pole position as far as the championship goes, unbeaten thus far this year. David Elsom in second and a few points behind. Just uh, four points behind David is his teammate Nick Tiley, William Torreson in fifth and Zena Cooper back with us today in fifth yet to score. In Class B, Scott Baines leads the championship standings with Ken Bateman second, Nick Barton third, ahead of Claire Kemp, then James Appleby and Michelle Edwards in sixth place. Today's very healthy grid coming into line. 17 cars spread across classes A and B and a bumper entry in class C2. Language on pole, Elsom next to him, then the returning Ed West and Nick Barton, Scott Baines and Ken Bateman on row three. Fourth row, Kevin Sterling and Michelle Edwards, then Keith Chapman and Claire Kemp, Nick Tiley and Barry Edwards on row six. Seventh row of the grid, James Appleby. Next to James is Zena Cooper with Tim Glover and Richard Beach on row eight. Ian Scruton on row nine. Cars on the grid getting ready for their first race. A decent crowd here at Brands Hatch today, part of the time attack meeting. And got to say, smart move by Kevin Shortish, the championship coordinator, to get the Fiestas in front of a different audience. We've got a big audience here, and it's a different one of drivers who wouldn't normally have a look at traditional racing. And there might be some potential racers watching here today at Brands Hatch, and that can only be good for the championship. Good for motor racing, of course. These guys are going to see some superb races today. Lights out. Great start by David Elson from the front row of the grid. The white car chops across. Now there's contact between Scott Baines who loses about three positions and also um, I think it was it was Kevin Sterling very possibly that he touched with so wow that was uh, that was very close stuff as they went into paddock the first time we're on board and David Elson leaves the door open John Language they say the race isn't one at the first corner Language wants to win it at the second corner he's through on the inside at Druids and now on the run down to Graham Hill Ben John Language it is the championship leader unbeaten this year Fantastic uh, fantastic first lap from him. I hesitate to say fantastic start. He got off the line well enough. It was David Elson who, has, uh, to be fair, had a few more car starts than him. Third position is Nick Barton at the moment, the leading Class B runner. As we look at Ken Bateman in 55, followed by the 17 car. That's Keith Chapman in 17. Now, two classes of racing. If you've not seen the competition car insurance Ford Fiesta championship before two classes here represented class A the SI 1800cc cars and mixed in the grid the 1400cc ZTEC class B's class B pole today going uh, going the way of Nick Barton for the first time this year beating three time pole sitter Scott Baines now each race meeting has two races and the first race of course grid decided by qualifying the second race of each weekend the grid is determined by the finishing positions from race one that's what we're looking at now and a challenge on here down the inside of Kevin Sterling who loses a place to Ken Bateman in 55 but John Langridge at the moment getting away Nick Barton's in third position David Elson second we're looking at Michelle Edwards in 77 who at the moment is ahead of Scott Baines in 73 but Baines slips through on the inside so Scott Baines, whose target's going to be the blue and green car of Nick Barton up front. Nick Barton looks on really good form this weekend. Now up along the outside line, and Michelle Edwards starting to put a, a bit of pressure on. That was going to be brave if he could brave it out around the outside of Paddock Hill Bend. But Scott Baines having absolutely none of it at all. And he didn't squeeze him out onto the grass, but he took a wide racing line. He knew what he wanted there, did Scott Baines. But at the moment, he's not shaking off Michelle Edwards, who comes from Chelsville, which is a short hop down the M25. That's the next stop down the uh, down the motorway, the next exit on the motorway. So this is his home race. Cars coming along Cooper Straight. Nick Barton coming under a bit of pressure from Ed West, car number 66, the blue car with the bright red trim. Ed running in third position in Class A at the moment, so great to see Ed back in the championship. Well, equally good to see a Class B car running so strongly at the moment, third overall. We'll see whether Ed is going to make a move. You would expect him to. Here he comes out of the sweep, Ed getting his confidence back 
after a ding last year, pretty major one too, and he tries tucks back in, can't make the most of that at the moment. Of course, he'll want to get ahead of Nick Barton as quick as he can because the, the man really is racing is the white 40 car and up the inside great outbreak from Ed West in 66 down the inside uses a bit of curbs on the second part now Nick Barton's going to come back at him Nick Barton's racing for position side by side into Graham Hill Bend Barton back through into third place on the race well he's leading the class and he's got a bit of a cushion between himself and the second man in class but he's enjoying his race with Ed West who looks up the inside as they come up towards Surtees well, it's not going to work this challenge at the moment. Certainly, Ed West being put under pressure in Class A. On the fourth in Class A is Nick Tiley, ahead of Zena Cooper. Great to see Zena putting a new engine in this weekend, having missed a few rounds. And, as we said, super entry here. And a massive uh, spectator field here today as well. Uh, around a much, much bigger than we get at the normal club meetings and uh, a lot of very exciting machinery on display aside from the track in the Time Attack Championship but we're here of course not really to talk about that we're talking about the competition car insurance for Fiestas and down Graham Hill Bend this enthralling battle for third place Ed West trying to put the pressure on he's third in class but wants third overall takes the curbs there you can see the cars run a little bit wide if they get one wheel across the curb they're okay they'll incur the wrath of the clerk of the course if both wheels continually go over the kerbs all around the track and might find themselves with a 10 second penalty or maybe a drive through but Nick Barton another local driver comes from Biggin Hill in Kent he's really showing his liking for Brands Hatch at the moment having a superb run John Langridge getting away in front so Langridge looking for win number 7 of the championship season I wonder where, where John's path will lie because I know it's early days and we've got half the season to go after Brands Hatch but he will have to start thinking about what he wants to do next year maybe move up into the ultra competitive Class C which we'll see in another programme leading cars through Druids one of the most uh, evocative names isn't it in British motorsport Druids for Hairpin and uh, everybody through safe and sound we just saw Zena Cooper coming through shot there towards the end of that one but we go back to Surtees Surtees corner Ken Bateman at the moment in the 55 car just ahead of Kevin Sterling in the 53 the white and blue machine Kevin who comes down from Norwich or has come down from Norwich this weekend to race Scott Baines still very much coming under pressure from Michelle Edwards so those two Scott hasn't managed to lose Michelle Edwards maybe home advantage local knowledge perhaps a few track days for Michelle has uh, helped him around here Scott Baines goes through then Ken Bateman in the 55 car there is Ken the man from Hockley in Essex so another relatively local driver in the Python Systems machine so Kevin Sterling trying to chase him down the Norwich man in Class B Let's just recount the Class B positions and is there going to be a change here? Nick Barton in Class B, the Class B leader, car number 88, being chased by the man who's third in Class A at the moment, 66, Ed West. Then we look back, we've got Scott Baines presently second in, uh, in Class B, followed by Michelle Edwards, so Michelle Edwards on the podium. And look at this run that's happening from Ed West, who looks to the outside line at Paddock Hill. Thought he might chop back to the inside as they went through Paddock. There is the race leader, John Langridge, through shot. Bit of a gap back now. A couple of two or three seconds gap to David Elson. Third place continues, and now Nick Barton's trying the outside. Ed West going up the inside. So Ed West in Class A, I think he feels that third position overall is he's really by right being in Class A, and a very neat move up the inside. And West through along Cooper straight. Nick Barton still leading Class B, but down to fourth overall. Don't think he's that's finished business for him at the moment. And just behind them, you can see Scott Baines and Michelle Edwards coming under attack with each other. So close battle going on for fifth position. At the moment, we're looking at the, four, the third and fourth position drivers. Language through in the lead. Across the line in second position goes David Elsom. Then it's... 
Nick Barton followed by Ed West. Here's Scott Baines in white, coming under pressure. Thought it was going to be an outside manoeuvre there from Michelle Edwards, but he can't do it. Down behind them, it's Kevin Sterling and Ken Bateman. So through again goes Baines and Edwards, and at the moment it's Ken Bateman that's got the upper hand at the moment over Kevin Sterling. Then it's uh, Keith Chapman on circuit. Claire Kemp running well at the moment in 10th position. And uh, unlike last year, pleased to say no retirement so far, which is really good to see. Fastest lap of the race in Class B going to Nick Barton. He really is underlying his form this weekend. First pole position of the year. But this man, John Langridge, has got fastest lap overall and in Class A, 58.543 for Langridge. 75 miles an hour nearly here around Brands Hatch. And let's watch him through Paddock. Nips the curve there. The camera doesn't really give you an idea of the drop. If you ever come to Brantash, make sure you get the opportunity to, to walk around the outside, or, or even better, if you can do a track walk, that is absolutely superb, and you'll see just how much of a dip there is there. The circuit climbs up to Druids, and now we go down from Druids, down Graham Hill, into Graham Hill Bend. With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keen, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. So into Surtees and through past Tim Glover goes David Elsom. Still on his way to third position in this one, Elsom. Seems to have got a bit of a, a gap now over Nick Barton. So the pressure is off as far as third position over, overall is concerned. As Langridge crosses the line once again. Still well clear. No back markers to worry him in the closing stages of the race. Scott Baines is still there as well. This is the scrap for fourth. Kevin Sterling's gone through on the inside of... Ke of of the 55 car, Ken Bateman. Ken Bateman's been passed by Kevin Sterling. So Kevin Sterling now up into seventh position and chasing Michelle Edwards. I'm just wondering whether Ken Bateman's going to be able to repay the compliment or not. That remains to be seen. But here is John Langridge, still absolutely supreme. Through clearways, Clark curve then down the Brabham straight once again and up across the line just 1.2 miles to go here on the Indy circuit at Brands Hatch between Langridge and his seventh win appropriately for car number seven this is the onboard view up into Druids great place to watch few people have decided to watch here today very neat, very tidy out of Druids for the last time that potentially one of the danger points if you take your mind off the game down Graham Hill, through Graham Hill Bend, Cooper Strait. And, uh, well, Langridge just uh, took his head off the steering wheel, I think, to have a look at the instrumentation through Surtees Corner. Then McLaren, the right-hander, into clearways. Big sweep for him. And at the moment, Langridge is six seconds clear of the second-place car, which is great news for him. out of Clark Curve and there is the chequered flag win number seven and congratulations then to D John Langridge who takes the win Langridge the winner we wait for the other cars to come across the line David Elsom in second position from in third place Nick Barton so what happened to Ed West I'm not sure but the Class B win going to Nick Barton Langridge taking the win David Elsom in second position and Nick Barton wins Class B Ed West He's fourth from Scott Baines, second in Class B, then Michelle Edwards. Kevin Sterling, seventh from Ken Bateman and Keith Chapman. Claire Kemp, tenth from Nick Tiley and Barry Edwards in twelfth place. Thirteenth was Zena Cooper ahead of James Appleby, then Tim Glover, Ian Scruton in sixteenth and Richard Beach in seventeenth. John, seven races, seven wins, 
Surely it's getting a little bit boring now for you out there at the front all the time, isn't it? Not at all, no. You have to constantly push all the time. Uh, you know, this weekend, as you can see, is baking hot, so you have to really look after the tyres as well as push the car as hard as possible to get the best lap times. But uh, looking at the results from the last um, race, the, the lap times were really close, so although it looked like a good gap, which it, it was by the end, you've got to keep up the, keep up the pressure. Now looking forward to this afternoon's race, obviously starting at the front yet again. Um, more of the same, just go out there and, and try not to get into trouble? Yeah, well, I hope so. Off the start of the last one, um, we, I didn't actually get away that well. I didn't get away too badly, but then David did a very good start and pulled alongside and got into the lead. So my top priority would be to, uh, to stay in the lead from the start and, and um, hopefully for me, keep it nice and boring. <laughs> <laughs> just, just drive up front, really. Keep now, concentrating. Surely you, you're now going to be looking at the championship and thinking, well, it probably doesn't matter too much if, if I don't have a, you know, don't yeah, have a good yeah. race or I'd, two. I'd rather but... get it home. Yeah, get it home on the podium if you can. Um, but yeah, if, if someone, you know, I obviously want to win every race I can, but uh, you've got to think long term. You have to because you can spend so much time, effort, money to get here, and there's the one thing everyone wants, and that's the championship. Fantastic. Well. Congratulations once again, and Thank you very uh, much. we look forward to speaking to you again this afternoon. Brilliant. See you later, Lloyd. Thank you. Nick Barton, a fantastic first race for you here at Brands Hatch. Uh, your first class pole position and your first class win. Yeah, it was brilliant. We had a very good qualifying yesterday. Um, really, really well on old tyres, so we thought we'd save the new ones for the race today. Very, very hot this morning, but had a very good start. Um, basically hassling around the SIs and managed to get a podium. Overall, like third overall and first in class, really, really happy with that. Certainly, there was a long battle with Ed West. Uh, was that something you were expecting to happen, or, um, or to be or not? honest, I thought the SIs would just drive off in the mm. distance, and being able to keep up with them was brilliant. And I'm not just going to sit sit behind them and follow them. I might as well give them a little race, it's, otherwise it's going to be boring. So. Much the same again for this afternoon, I'm hoping. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully, another class win that would be great. Fantastic. Well, you're starting from pole position once again. You're up amongst the the SIs once again, so an exciting race all round. Yeah, definitely. If I can finish where I start, that would be a, a great weekend's racing. Fantastic. Well, thank you for speaking to us, and we look forward to hopefully speaking to you this afternoon. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers. Ed West, fantastic third in class for you this morning. Talk us through it, because you're having a little bit of a battle with Nick Barton. Yeah, I mean, it was an interesting race. Um, my first one back since uh, last year. Um, and yeah, it was a bit tricky being stuck behind the V, which uh, was extremely fast down the straights, which was a bit unusual. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a job getting past him, and that really held me up for a long time. But once you got past, of course, it was then yeah, well, was, was fairly straightforward. I got past. Um, I think I was then past David Elson within a few laps, um, and seemingly home dry in second place. But uh, David really kept the pressure on um, until I think the penultimate lap. He just pushed me a bit bit too hard and I went a little bit wide coming out of clear ways and uh, once you get two wheels on the gravel there there's no coming back so I just kept the wheels forward the power on and managed to uh, pull it back but lost two places in the meantime so a bit disappointing. But a good race nevertheless and yeah. um, good position for this afternoon's race as well. What do you think you can do from there? Well this afternoon I'm hoping for at least second again I think that's what I've got to try for that's what I was trying for this morning. Um, and it all comes down to the start as long as I get past um, Nick Barton again if I can do that a little bit earlier I can get past Dave and hopefully keep up with John um, that's got to be the plan to start giving him a bit of a hard time Do you think it's possible to catch John? because so far no one this year has been able to Well I think if I can if I can get behind him from the start I think I can definitely keep on to the back of him and as you say he hasn't had any pressure yet so if I can keep on the uh, keep on his tailgate then there's always a chance that he'll slip up and uh, I can hope to get past Fantastic well we look forward to watching that this afternoon Cheers and hopefully we'll speak to you again later yeah, Thanks a lot Cheers Ed David another fantastic race for you here at Brands Hatch Talk with Stoke there was a lot of action going on right throughout yeah, there was, there was a lot of action, and I think that um, I had a good start, excellent start, that was part of my game plan really, so to try and jump John at the, at the, at the, at the start there for the first corner. Um, hopefully, there'll be a bit of a scrap behind, which will give me a bit of a lead. Fairly predictable John will come through at some point, but uh, it just sort of, um, fortunately for me, uh, Ed West got behind a B class, so uh, that gave me a bit of a breather, and I could concentrate on moving forward rather than defending. So. That was a, the best start, really, that I could have hoped for. But Ed came back with you uh, with a vengeance, yes, really. Um, but uh, you were able to keep the pressure on him. 
Yeah, I think he firstly put the pressure on me, and I was looking at him in my mirror more than I was the trail. I ran out of road, unfortunately, into clearways. Uh, I went wide, Ed came through, um, and uh, on the straight there, I sort of messed up the exit to that, and uh, couldn't really, really back in. I was putting the pressure on as much as possible. Had it a bit ragged uh, through uh, Paddock Hill uh, Bend, and also into Drew's a couple of times, um, just while I was really ch trying to chase him down. But uh, uh, luckily for me, it made a, a mistake coming out of clearways, and uh, uh, it gave me the second place, which was my predictable qualify second, finish, you know, start second and finish second. So, uh, second place, as they call me in the paddock now. <laughs> Do you think you're going to continue that this afternoon? It's, there's obviously a lot more competition at the front now, with, with Ed yeah. back in, it's a lot, in yeah, the It's exciting, and uh, Ed, Ed got the fastest lap between the two of us by nine thousandths of a second, so uh, I'm keen to try and reclaim that this afternoon. That's going to be my mission this <laughs> afternoon. I think it's going to be very close, and uh, I say I'm looking forward to it. But the question is, can anyone catch John? I don't know. I don't think I can. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best, but uh, um, it was it was good. It was really showing to actually keep him in shot this time. You know, he wasn't just sort of gone. I think it was only six seconds, really, six, seven seconds uh, away after a 20 minute race. So it's a lot closer, and that's the beauty of brands, really. I think it's uh, sort of promotes some of the bees up to the front as well, so for the front runners. Fantastic. Well, we wish you all the best for this afternoon, David, and uh, hopefully we'll speak to you then. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Michelle, a great race there, third in Class B for you this morning at Brands Hatch. But quite a lot going on, especially with Scott. A great battle. Well, that's right. It was a good uh, battle with Scott. Um, managed to get past him after the ding dong he had at the start line, and I was going quite well. But he dived down on the inside of me at uh, clearways, and but then I was behind him all the time, and I just didn't quite have enough uh, of, enough power or enough daring this to actually overtake him. I was uh, passing down the straight, but he was just tucking in and chucking it in the corners, like Scott does. Certainly a couple of times coming through Paddock Hill here, it, it looked like there was uh, an opportunity or the pair of you were side by side and it could go either way. Is that how it felt for you driving it? It, it did, it felt like that, but I thought, well, knowing Scott, he wouldn't think twice of just tapping you, so I thought it's best to finish and finish than not finish at all, you know. So after uh, yesterday morning's practice where I was in the shingle twice, I thought, you know, just take that uh, a little bit easier this time. Keep it on the island and bring it home. <laughs> yes, keep it on the island and bring it home. But uh, as Scott was slow, because I was actually pushing him down the straight, I was that, that much faster than him, mm. the, uh, the other two were catching us up. So the last few laps, it was trying to keep on the Scots towel, defend, uh, and it was a bit of a moment at times. And, and hope for the best. Well, it's much much better to uh, defend and make sure you finish your third than you know, finish fifth or sixth, which is what it would have been. You know? Looking forward to this afternoon's race, obviously starting third in class. Yeah. Scott's just in front of you. Is there anything you can do from the start line, do you think? Uh, it depends, really. I think it'd be nice to get past Scott, and I think uh, more important is just to keep up with him. Uh, but uh, Barton's going terrifically well with it today and he doesn't know where he's getting the power from but he's really motoring but it, it's going to be interesting from the start because Nick's going to be a little bit closer because he finished behind all of the Class A cars yeah, yeah. so for you guys in Class B it might be a little bit closer off the start line than it was it, it this morning do. I think it's all about what the start line's going to be really I mean uh, it's, tr it's trying to get it around the first bend I think that's, that's important we've seen quite a few accidents at the beginning and uh, this morning I just took my opportunity and managed to get past them all and, and uh, you know, get to clear ways for second in class, which I was well pleased with. And it's just head down after that. Fantastic. Well, thank you for speaking to us, Michelle, and we wish you all the best of luck for this afternoon. State your desires. Speed. Adrenaline. Competition. Calculating. Result in three, two, one. The National Auto Source Association. Start here. Scott, we can see a lot of work going on in your car in the background before the second race this afternoon. Let's uh, talk us through what's happening at the moment. We had a bit of a shrunk off the start line this morning. One of the uh, 1800s came across me, uh, not the steering out. So we found, we think, just the steering on the bench, which is not easy. Well, it's not, not massively accessible, so it's taken us a bit of time to do it. And um, we just tried to find a bit of process to try to get the track and everything done. 
Um, I think so good an issue with um, power um, today, yesterday. We found a hole in the cat in the fixed um, device, we also changed that. Um, so a lot of work for you and the team over the last couple of days. It's been an awful lot. We had a few things steering around the players' guy yesterday, so it's kind of been absolutely <laughs> stopped since I got it, if I'm honest. But, but came away second in class. Yep. Had a good battle with Michelle, even though you, you had issues with the steering. Yep. With a, a good car, what do you think you can do this afternoon? I think Nick Barton's found quite a lot of pace, and I think we're lacking a bit of pace for whatever reason. We're lacking a bit of power. Um, really, I think we need to get it steering straight, and I think, if I'm honest, seconds reasonable place to finish. If I can get in front of Nick then I'll do my best to hold him up <laughs> for as long as I can but I think realistically unless something happens to him I think we'll be on the second thing that's realistic right to achieve today. Comparing that with the rest of your results this year yep. and having a, a longer term look at the championship surely second's not too bad at the moment is I, it? I think for the points hall it's, 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 it's you know, you've got to look at the points and to, to keep scoring good points is what we need to so can't call the DNF um, to second yeah it's just totting points up um, OK well we'll let you get back to getting the car sorted and yep, lovely. we'll see you out there Thank you Cheers Scott Here's the grid for round eight of the Competition Car Insurance Ford Fiesta Championship. John Langridge on pole with David Elson alongside. Nick Barton and Ed West on row two. Scott Baines and Michelle Edwards row three. Then Kevin Sterling and Ken Bateman. Keith Chapman and Claire Kemp row five. Nick Tiley and Barry Edwards on row six. Seventh row, Zena Cooper and James Appleby. Then Timothy Glover and Ian Scruton. Richard Beach lines up in 17th. 17 starters, 17 finishers for race one here at Brands Hatch and therefore we have all 17 on the grid again. Lights out, cracking start again from the front row. Just looking at Nick Barton trying to get up between the Class A's as well. Great start again from David Elsom who leads down into Paddock but coming around the outside in superb form again is Ed West who's looking for another podium. Side by side between Barton and West for third place. But Elsom, it is that leads. Big plume of dust there. This time, John Langridge doesn't manage to get ahead of David Elsom as they go through. Just a quick glimpse of car number two, Barry Edwards. I think first look at him this season, if memory recalls. But it's David Elsom that leads from John Langridge in second position. This is what Elsom wanted to do. He certainly knows how to get his starts hooked up. And Langridge really... Now we're halfway through the season, needs to probably start sorting his starts out. It's the only criticism we can maybe level at, at John, and I'm sure he'd be uh, agree with that. But here we are on board with him, looking to challenge for the race lead. And it's David Elsom up front at the moment. Let's see whether David's going to vehemently defend this position or maybe leave a door open as he did at Druid's last time. Goes wide, and Langridge powers his way through on the inside to take the lead. And up into the lead of Class B goes Scott Baines. Scott Baines has got his problem sorted out. Baines into lead position in Class So, Well, the status quo has been resumed, hasn't it? Here with John Langridge leading overall and Scott Baines leading Class B. Nick Barton down to second in Class B. And Ed West finds himself behind two of the 1400. So West with a bit of work to do. Down behind West is Michelle Edwards who had a super race to a podium in race one as we saw but John Langridge now the, the thing for David Elson maybe is to perhaps follow in the wheel tracks of John Langridge and see if he can watch and learn see where Langridge has got some sort of advantage but Elson's going to need to keep his eyes on his mirrors because he's got Scott Baines right behind him and then Baines coming under pressure from Nick Barton who wants first position back so Barton right behind this battle have a look as they go into Paddock Hill Bend outside line for him Ed West is there as well Kevin Sterling retains his place ahead of Ken Bateman just behind them but the leader's up to Druids once again a bit of dust being kicked up from some uh, fluid on circuit from one of the other events here that's been dealt with by the marshals but at the moment Baines and Barton still third and fourth Baines with a little bit of breathing space the white car with the chequered roof so along Cooper straight they go into Surtees corner and Langridge starting to build up a little bit of a lead a couple of lengths or so in these early stages ahead of David Elson who you heard has got the nickname second place now but you know, you've got to say John Langridge has been absolutely superb and Elson 
course, second position in the championship, is putting in some good consistent runs himself. Ed West looking to the outside line here, so trying to move up a position overall. It won't affect class position. And at the moment, he's having to content himself with sitting behind the class B car. Scott Baines dives to the outside line. He's going for a sweeper into Druids, and he had a little bit of space behind him to play with there. Nick Barton still tucked in behind, and then Ed West as well. Ed joining the championship this weekend, as you heard. Class B led by Scott Baines from Kent Bateman and Nick Barton. Barton will have closed up a wee bit on points, but I think still retaining third place in Class B from Keith Chapman and Claire Kemp. Michelle Edwards had 52 points, so Michelle Edwards probably would have gone into first, second, third, fourth, fifth position in the championship after that first race. Nick Barton, though, starting to put pressure on Scott Baines. A lap or so ago, it was Baines putting pressure on Elsa, who's getting away. But here comes Nick Barton round the outside. And look at that, Scotty's in a sandwich down the inside, tries to go Ed West, but Baines fighting back on the inside. He really does know that if you've got the inside line and sufficient pace that you don't need to force the driver out, the, the attacking driver, onto the outside line. So Nick Barton in the 88 car is now under pressure from Ed West. Barton's going to have the line down into Graham Hill Bend. Let's see whether, well, Ed West doing well there, thinking about that, rather than get perhaps forced out onto the dirt, decides that discretion is the better part of valour, drops away. And we'll have to try and come back and fight that position again. Battling for fifth place at the moment, Ed West. So he's got time to still sort things out. So we look at Nick Barton. Michelle Edwards closing in. The blue car with the red trim. Then Kevin Sterling. Followed by Ken Bateman in the white car with red trim. Just at the back of this gaggle of cars. And then a gap back to the rest of them, I think, at the moment. Led by Barry Edwards. Ed West trying the outside line at Paddock Hill Ben once again. Let's see whether he can go through at Paddock. Well, we're going to switch back and have a look at John Langridge. Clear circuit, no back markers. A little bit of sun starting to go down here, which will get in all of the driver's eyes. And Langridge looking very handy indeed. Neat little turn in from him. Little rumble over the curves. Not getting away for my money as quickly as he did in race one from David Elson. He will afford himself the odd glance in the mirror into Surtees McLaren now wide into Clearways where the Grand Prix circuit joins the Indy or club circuit here at Brands Hatch there's the run into the pit pit lane you can see on the right of circuit John buzzes the pit wall doesn't look like anybody's uh, hanging out pit signals for him he probably knows he's in uh, first position anyway and back down the order 32 Claire Kemp there is Barry Edwards in car number two so Claire Kemp actually leading that group with uh, Keith Chapman in the 17 car as well Scott Bain still coming under pressure from Nick Barton this is the battle for the leading class B the 1400cc Z-Tech class and Scott Bain who he just got the impression from that interview with Lloyd that he was a bit disappointed with second position in class and he wants a win you know you can talk about championship positions talk about consistency but these guys and girls are here to win every time now and that's what Barton's doing as he goes around the outside nips across the front Baines is having none of it fights back Baines could have easily conceded that position but he's racing hard for the lead and hangs on to it David Elsom's getting away with those Ed West in 66 has got past those two cars now and up into third overall so we look at the scrap for fourth now for Class B honours and look at the queue behind these guys this is the closest we've seen Class B this year for sure certainly up as high as second position so Scott Baines leading the class at the moment from Nick Barton there is David Elsom second Ed West in third trying to close down on him fourth position is Baines fifth position Nick Barton sixth position at the moment is Michelle Edwards then Kevin Sterling in 53 following them the red and white 55 car of Ken Bateman and a bit of a gap back visitor to the pit lane I think is Ian Scruton very possibly just see a car coming through uh, pit lane there possibly uh, a problem or maybe a drive through I'm not sure what's going on there with Ian's car but uh, let's hope that he can get things sorted out and rejoin on track the leaders in class B continue on their way 
very close stuff with Kevin Sterling putting Michelle Edwards under pressure as they come up to, to Druids down behind them as well it's Ken Bateman in 55 a little bit of a gap between second and third in class at the moment in the B's even bigger gap between leader in class A John Langridge who's still getting away David Elson running in second position and trying to hunt him down certainly not being left at the rate he was in, in race one so that's good for David Elson he's making progress I think the field's starting to make a little bit of progress on John Langridge as the season goes on lead battle continues here in class B and here comes Nick Barton side by side with the class B leader Scott Baines as they come across the line there's the battle of the third position in class Michelle Edwards is there and he's through into lead position, Nick Barton's back in front in Class B. Pole position coming into this, or the first race. Won the first race, and he's in the lead of this one, but Scott Baines isn't finished. The characteristic wide line from Scott Baines, and he can do that. That's a good attacking line from Baines. He's poised at the moment for the outside line. No, he isn't. Tucked back in behind Nick Barton. So the Biggin Hill racer leading the man from Ely in Cambridgeshire at the moment. A long Cooper straight. There is David Elsom, followed by Ed West. West is lapping very quickly now he's in clear traffic I can tell you he's actually the fastest driver in class A the club an amateur racer here at Go Racing TV we salute you and we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our club racer and autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. And enjoying his race with Ken Bateman there in 55. Michelle Edwards is still going, I can tell you, but down in eighth position ahead of uh, Keith Chapman. 8th position being 5th in class for Class B as John Langridge continues on his way and pulling clear the gap out to well nearly 4 seconds over David Elsom you can see the second car there is David Elsom so Elsom has kept him closer in this race that's going to be quite good for David to, to go away with it I don't think he'll be overly over the moon with second position but it'll be closer and of course he's got the attentions of Ed West you have to wonder if Ed hadn't got stuck behind the Class B cars in the early part of the race, having set the fastest lap, whether he would have perhaps been on for a second place. This is the view then from the man who is unbeaten to pole position this year, unbeaten to race wins. He's missed out on fastest lap a couple of times, got his sixth fastest lap of the season in race two. Six out of seven is not bad at the moment. It doesn't look like he's going to get that accolade in this race. That, I think, is going to go the way of Ed West. So that will send a little signal to John Langridge that although he's got a pretty good championship lead, he might have to look to his laurels for race wins over the course of the remaining four meetings in the championship. Championship, incidentally, which concludes here at Brands Hatch in October, part of the Formula Ford Festival. So David Elsom now starting to come under a bit of pressure from Ed West who really is reeling him in so Ed West putting Elsom under pressure in these closing stages down behind them back markers work their way through where is the uh, class B leader there he is then comes around Druids with a good lead over Scott Baines at the moment Kevin Sterling still in third Ken Bateman in fourth place wide line for Bateman as they go down through Graham Hill and uh, challenging for a potential podium position in class B race leader through Elsom is closer isn't he David Elsom is closer to John Langridge it's three or four seconds between the two and Ed West is closing in as well for second position I wonder if Ed West is going to have enough time to be able to reel in Langridge there is Langridge across the line and Ed West is having a look up the inside line well he's too far back there the camera angle deceiving us just a little bit as they go along the main straight into Paddock here is the scrap for second position in Class B and Kevin Sterling's coming up to have a go. Ken Bateman in 55 wide line but we've seen Scott Baines be the absolute master of Paddock in this round and he's defended every time. Camera going back to the battle of the second overall and it's really difficult to know where to look here but 
It's David Elsom in second position at the moment. Ed West, the returning driver, in third position. Out of Clark Curve then, and onto the Brabham Straight here across the line. And David Elsom still hanging on to that second place. He's responded well to the pressure from Ed West here for sure. Could have really got flustered. You heard him say that he was driving on his mirrors a little bit in the first race of the day. But I don't think that's the case now. He's got his head down, focusing on his line. West may be a tad quicker lap on lap, and he is closing in, but he's not really putting too much pressure on the second-place driver at the moment. Down through Graham Hill they go again. But one mistake from Elsom is going to gift second position to Ed West. We haven't seen too many mistakes from... David Elsom this season he's been driving absolutely superbly his second season of racing with us Ed West still in third place I can tell you that Nick Barton's still hanging on to the lead in Class B a little way back but there is John Langridge who crosses the line again still on his own just the occasional little bit of back marker traffic for him to deal with climb up towards Paddock Hill Bend and then they'll go down the other side of the undulation turn and dip at the same time Nick Barton there he is in 88 still leading Class B. Scott Baines coming under pressure once again from Kevin Sterling who's in third. Ke Ken Bateman's going to look around the outside line. Ken Bateman goes wide in the 55 car. Let's see whether Bateman can make a move here. Dives up the inside line but still has to stay there behind the Scotsman in fourth position in class. We'll see whether he can maybe squeeze it in to bring it home for a podium but John Langridge it is then still clear circuit some getting ever lower and this man on for a perfect 8 out of 8 wins I'm not sure if anybody else in uh, British motorsport has done that this year certainly won't have done in a championship as competitive as the competition car insurance Ford Fiesta championship so under the bridge into Druids very neat turn in again from John Langridge he's not as far ahead as we said he's still got a gap of about four and a half seconds over David Elsom in second position Elsom now as we've seen with the ever closing Ed West behind him but looking relatively secure in second position turns into the left hander at Surtees still no pressure at all on Langridge the man from Bodium in Sussex has made a superb transition from kart racing into car racing and let's hope that this is just the first step on the ladder for this man back marker traffic ahead Tim Glover in red but there is the chequered flag for a perfect eight wins out of eight for John Langridge David Elsom does hang on to second position from Ed West in third confirmation of that Nick Barton comes home in fourth position and wins Class B Scott Bain second in Class B retaining the championship lead Kevin Sterling third in B following Sterling it's Ken Bateman and Michelle Edwards then Keith Chapman in ninth tenth was Barry Edwards from Claire Kemp then James Appleby twelfth Nick Tiley next from Zena Cooper and it was Tim Glover Richard Beach and Ian Scruton down in 17th Championship points look like this. John Langridge now on 134 from David Elsom on 102. Nick Tiley third. William Torreson fourth from Ed West who jumps in at fifth position and Alan Donnelly in sixth. In Class B, Scott Baines continues to lead from Ken Bateman with Nick Barton still in third place and Michelle Edwards now up into fourth ahead of Keith Chapman and Claire Kemp in sixth. John, another victory, but uh, a little bit more of a fight for that one. Yeah, I didn't really get away again very well but um, I had a, a pretty good exit out of clearways and just got in the toe of uh, Dave and was able to slingshot into the lead it was um, pretty pleasing because we didn't have fifth gear actually in that last race a slight problem with the uh, with the gearbox so the whole race I was in fourth and probably cost me a little bit of time but overall at the end it wasn't a problem well wow. and so even more impressive the the way that you're able to, to take victory thank you very much yeah this is um, when you look at the calendar this is my home race and uh, at the start of the year, you know, you really want to win your home race. And we had friends, family, some sponsors here. Um, so this was, this was the one I wanted to bag and uh, did the job. Certainly a good weekend for you, increasing the, the championship lead. We head to Rockingham next. 
What are your thoughts about that circuit? Exciting, very exciting. Never been there, don't really know what it looks like. Um, we'll go up there and have a little look at it uh, the, day, the day before and um, see, see how it goes really. Uh, that'll be an important weekend because that could be, could be getting there then. Fantastic, well congratulations once again and we look forward to seeing you in Rockingham. Thanks Lloyd. Cheers. Kevin Sterling, a fantastic third place there for you in the second race this afternoon here at Brands Hatch. Quite a battle going on there. Absolutely. There was a battle from the minute we started to the minute we finished. Really, really close, really hard racing and uh, just fortunate that I um, managed to finish. There's certainly a lot going on with Scott Baines and with, with Bateman behind you as well. How difficult was it for you to keep the car on track, keep putting pressure on and defend at the same time? Well, the idea was to try and gain a little bit of a gap between myself and Ken Bateman, break that toe and then chase uh, after uh, Scott Baines. I could see Scott was in trouble and he was slow and he was clearly slower on the straights, which I was catching him hand over fist. And I did try very, very difficult corner paddock hill bend on the outside twice to try and get him but he just held that inside line and i had to uh, let him have the corner a couple of times it looked like bateman was coming up for you especially on the last lap going into druids were you overly concerned about that or is it just a case of keeping yourself on the track and, and that was all you, you were focusing on no i was very concerned being the last lap that i had to defend up into druids big style and i took the defensive line and held it all the way around and just continued on the on the lap really because i knew that ken got me around the druids this morning in the first race and i was um i was confident that i was going to stop him this time and not let him get the the position back fantastic well congratulations on your third place thank you and uh, we look forward to seeing you at Rockingham. Indeed, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. It's got a tough race for you in the second race this afternoon, but uh, you came through with second place. We fought that one all the way. Um, got a very good start, got in front of uh, Nick Barton. Um, he came back on me and I didn't really have an answer for him. He has so much more power. Um, and then really I sort of fell back into clutches of um, Kevin Sterling and uh, Ken Bateman. And from, from, from there on in, it was kind of sort of defend, defend, defend and try and hang on for whatever we could but there's a there's a problem with the engine somewhere it's basically just getting slower and slower and felt tighter and tighter and had absolutely no um, no power at all so obviously we need to um, kind of address that and also we still had some injuries from uh, the, 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 the first race shunt this morning as well so the, the tracking was out and I think the hub might be bent so it's kind of run it round and damage limitation type thing really so not too bad then come away you're still leading the championship we go to Rockingham next. Is that a track you think you're going to do well at? I've never been there, so I can't speak. Um, from looking out on the telly, it's a definite power circuit. So unless we get the uh, the motor sorted, then I think we might as well stop at home. But uh, you know, all being equal, and the cars back up to par, then we should, we should be back on pace again. But uh, we shall see. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on both of your second places this weekend. It's kept you the lead in the championship, and we look forward to seeing you at Rockingham. We will indeed. Thank Cheers. you. Well, there we go. Fantastic racing here from classes A and B in the competition car insurance Ford Fiesta Championship here at Brands Hatch. We hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you again very soon.